Welcome to Shelly's Game Kitchen in Montana. I'm so excited to have you here in my home in the Bitterit Valley, and I'm gonna show you so many new and exciting things with wild and pure game meat this season. Plus, I get to show you wonderful vistas in the landscape of my hometown in the Bitterit Valley, Montana. So keep watching, stick around for a new season of Shelly's Game Kitchen, where I bring the forest to your table. I'm so glad to have you here in my home in Montana. And I'd like to show uh, some wonderful game meat we have here from Broken Arrow Ranch. And this is Chris Hughes. Chris, welcome to Montana. Welcome to my home. Oh, thank you so much, Shelley. Glad to be here. Beautiful, beautiful place. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Everybody that comes here absolutely falls in love well. with my part of Montana, which is the western part of the state. It's gorgeous, bitter at Valley. Just wonderful, wonderful area, and we have beautiful weather today. So we're gonna actually showcase some antelope leg, right? Right. So tell me a little bit about this cut of meat, Chris. Yeah. So this is the uh, South Texas antelope leg filet steak. So this is from a large antelope uh, that is uh, native to India, introduced down into South Texas, probably in the 1930s or so. Wow. Uh, so we go down there, we harvest these antelope. They're roaming around a 240,000 acre ranch down there. We harvest the animals, use a mobile processing unit, so everything's done out there in the field. It's all humane. Uh, it's uh, very, very clean. Nice. Government inspected. That's what lets us sell it to restaurants and, and yes. individuals as part of that process. Specifically on this cut, what we do is we, we take that animal, it goes through a double aging process oh. where uh, that animal is, is dry aged for about three to five days. Uh, it's kind of a whole carcass, and then at that point, it's broken down into the primals, whole saddles, uh, which would be the back, and then the whole leg, and then it's wet aged for 21 to 28 days. Nice. Yeah. So now wet aging doesn't mean that we've injected it with anything or added any kind of um, fluids into it. All that means is we're we're letting the we vacuum seal it and we let the natural enzymes just kind of work in there break right. down a yep. lot of the connective tissue exactly uh, but we don't have evaporation moisture evaporation and that does, that helps to where we don't dehydrate mm -hmm. and lose weight because exactly. when you dry age you're losing a lot of weight and 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 product viability. So right. on a wet age, you're still getting that same tenderizing and, and so forth without losing the weight. Right, exactly. Nice. And, and so you hear about dry aged beef. Yeah. And I'll take it for 30 days, 60 days, what have you. And you can do that because beef is marble. It's got all of that fat that's, that's yes, within exactly. the muscle. And this, this stuff is so lean. Uh, I mean, this, this is actually technically fat-free meat. Yeah. It is 0.5% fat content. Uh, so, and honestly. leaner than chicken, leaner than turkey, leaner than any of your white meats. That's what is the beautiful thing about game meat is it's so much leaner, but it just takes a different technique in how you cook it. Mm -hmm. You know, how you really respect the meat and the quality of that. But to start with something that's aged, yep. Is, makes it even more tender because game by natural in a lot of those cuts is, is going to be a tender cut but when you age it mm -hmm. you're even adding more tenderness and also flavor would you say that's right? Oh absolutely yeah so there's just some of that depth of flavor that, that gets developed throughout that aging process uh, and then yeah the, you know the tenderness from the enzymes the fact that it's aged on the bone so the natural tension you know that exists in those muscles as it's on the bone as opposed to being Flayed out, out, yeah. Flayed out and, and then age. So that natural tension in the bone just helps 
pull muscle fibers apart and helps, helps keep that meat that much more tender. Tender, tender and more yeah. flavorful. So what you do is you take the primal cut and that's what you wet age for the 28 mm -hmm. days, 21 to 28 days. And then you cut it down into portion sizes and then you cryo back it in that. And this is what you would receive if you're sh uh, shopping online at Chris's website, brokenarrowranch.com. You can go and see all of the wonderful different types of game that they have there. And we'll talk more about how he actually goes out and harvests those wonderful animals. But when you get it at home, this is kind of the packaging that you'll see and it's beautifully, beautifully packaged and, and so forth. I'm so impressed with this product. I can't tell you. So thank you for coming on this the show with and, and let's get cooking. All right, let's do it. So keep watching while I bring the forest to your table. So what we're doing today with this wonderful South Texas antelope, which I know, you know, is Nilgai by its actual right. breed, but we call it South Texas antelope, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to do a shawarma, which is just these wonderful, wonderful um, kind of Mediterranean inspired seasonings. And I'm going to create that shawarma with my Montana flavor to savor herb seasoning, my salt free modifier, and then one other ingredient and it's turmeric. And we'll blend all of that together and kind of marinate it. If you know a, a, the kind of the difference, a lot of people don't understand if you brine and you marinade, a marinade actually only gets into the top quarter inch of the meat. So marinade brings flavor. It doesn't necessarily bring tenderness. The mm. brine brings moisture and more tenderness, but this is already super tender. The aged antelope, yeah. aged South Texas antelope filet. Correct. Uh, okay. But since how that's already nice and tender, we don't need to tenderize it, but I want to add flavor. I want to add all of those. So I'm going to get, slice this up into slivers because with shawarma, it's actually a, I, I kind of refer to it as the Greek version of fajitas. <laughs> that's probably a really good you know, explanation. It, yeah. It's easier to just kind of describe it that way. And I like to get a little bit more creative with all of the different types of game. We get a little bored just having steak. You know, we want to have something more unique and some different cuisines. So let's experiment with that. Actually, Chris, I'm going to have you start making our Greek salad. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to have you do is we just want to quarter and have those cherry or grape tomatoes. Okay. And the same thing with the cucumbers. We're just going to quarter and have or have and then quarter them and then de-seed. Okay. Um, and then we'll put all of that together with some red onion. Okay. Good. But you get started on that right. and I'm going to get started on this nil guy. So if you can kind of see the grain, you want to always look at the grain of your meat. And if you can kind of see, it's running this way. So you want to cut against the, or the crosswise of that grain. So what I'm going to do is just kind of come in and get some nice slivers going, like so. Kind of sliver that up. And that just really increases the surface area. It's just going to bring exactly. in more, more of that seasoning flavor. That's exactly right. We get that surface area down because if we have it thin, sliced like that, that marinade's going to get all the way through that meat and better flavor to really get the that shawarma mm -hmm. spices mm -hmm. in there. And we're going to add some lemon juice. And that's one of the other things that's kind of different between a marinade and a brine. A marinade, you can really get away with adding more citrus, but a brine, because it's usually a longer time, you don't want to have a lot of citrus in a long brine mm -hmm. because then your meat will get mealy. So this is one of those things of we want a quick marinade. Um, and the surface temp, uh, quantity, size of the surface being smaller uh, gets those flavors in there. So I'm just going to continue to cut up these and get them all slivered and then we're going to add our spices. Great cut. So a lot of people, everybody says, they always think that there's only one cut on the deer and that's the, the, the back strap. Back strap. The <laughs> I, want, I want the back strap. And it's, you know, it's a really nice cut. You know, it's, it's, it's very, very tender. But because it's not really a working muscle, yes. it doesn't have a lot of a lot of flavor. It's you know, very, very, very mild. So very, very tender, but doesn't have a lot of flavor going. Through. Yes. These these leg fillets, we really kind of call it like the perfect compromise between flavor and tenderness. And tenderness. So it's it's got a tenderness that you can cook it like a steak. Yep. Um, cook it, you know, rare, medium, rare, and you can enjoy it like a loin. Uh, but 
uh, it has a little bit more depth of flavor going on it so you, you just know that you're eating eating something enjoyable as opposed to just almost I don't, I don't quite say a flavorless piece of meat yeah but it just you know it just it just has more depth of flavor than uh, a loin or a tenderloin would have perfect well and that's what a lot of times people get a little bit um, turned off of like beef fillets even mm -hmm. because they don't have as much flavor as a ribeye but right. That's in the beef world, the, the marbling actually creates more flavors with that. But in the game world, I think your aging process that you do is creating a lot more of those and developing those flavors that we want in our game. Absolutely. Wonderful. So I've got all those sliced up thin. And now I'm going to add, I'm going to kind of make my marinade and whisk it all together. What I'm going to do with that, I'm going to start with my dry ingredients, and that's just a teaspoon of turmeric, and then I'm going to go in with my herb seasoning, and the herb seasoning's got all of that oregano and, and kind of those things that you're really looking for in a Greek seasoning. But then the salt-free modifier, I'm going to add actually a tablespoon of salt-free modifier because this is what's bringing in that cumin and the coriander and the paprika, all of those things that's kind of your shawarma seasonings. So that's one of the beautiful things about my set of seasonings is you can combine different ones with that salt-free modifier and create more interesting cuisine. So it's been really kind of a fun fun way to do that. Just kind of like mixing and matching on the, yeah. on the formulas. Exactly. And so what I'm going to do with that dry rub, so I've created that little dry rub. I'm just going to sprinkle that over my prepared meat, my sliced up meat here. And I like to just kind of massage that in there mm -hmm. and get a little bit more. So we're kind of working the, the yep. dry rub into the meat and really trying to create that wonderful Season your meat first. In, in the yeah. cooking world, you always like to season your protein first before you're kind of adding your other ingredients. So we're gonna do that, to season that up, get a nice coating as you can see. I've got a nice coating of that dry rub on all of those little strips. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take, let me wash, wash my hands off here. I do love a dry rub on you know, when you're cooking a steak or a filet or something like that, just even you know, without even adding any liquid, if you just add the dry rub, you let it set up overnight, it really brings those flavors deep into that meat. Absolutely. I agree. And the one thing that I would do and add to that is that you don't want to have a ton of salt in your dry rubs. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to have a good balance and then add more salt right before you're cooking it because that you want the dry rub to really get in there. The salt will help kind of permeate the edges and get into that meat more, but then you're kind of getting into more of a brine scenario too. But I, salt is one of those things that you need to add more of as you're cooking. Right. So we always see those recipes, it's salt and pepper to taste. Right. So we can kind of give you the idea of let's add you know, a teaspoon of salt or a, a <laughs> half a teaspoon of pepper. But when it comes down to it, the taste in the chef's palate is gonna be the best thing to yeah. to utilize. <laughs> and, and, and one thing to note uh, uh, with venison, especially this antelope, because it is so lean, yeah. uh, that it actually does need a bit more salt than, than you think it might actually need. Because it, yes. because it doesn't have that fat to carry through the flavors. Uh, you really need salt to help, you know, carry that, that flavor through onto, onto your palate. Nice, so, exactly. Um, Good point. It's kind of a little tip there. People ask, how, how do you season the antelope? I say, well, just, you know, add, add, add the salt you think it needs and then just add a little, a little bit, bit more. A little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> and that's because it's so lean, mm -hmm. you know, it, you don't have all of those other fat elements in, exactly. like you have in beef, that you need a little bit more salt and, and pepper and, and so forth. So what I'm doing here is just adding some olive oil to that lemon that I squeezed. 
and then I'm going to kind of mix these up. And like I said, because this is a marinade, it is a little bit more acid heavy, um, but it's kind of a, you know, basically one lemon to a third of a cup of olive oil. And we're just gonna kind of blend those together and pour that over our seasoned South Texas antelope. And a marinade is again, we're only gonna get a quarter inch in there. Mm -hmm. But because it's so thin, we're gonna be able to get a little bit more coverage on that. And that acid will bring a nice, a nice flavor too. A nice well. flavor, it adds flavor as well as tenderizing, but it also plays off of all of the shawarma and spices and so forth. So what we're gonna do is just kind of mix this together and then I'm gonna set that aside while we finish prepping kind of our dressing for our salad. Mm -hmm. And you're doing a great job, that looks Thanks. perfect. Let's set that aside and kind of, the other thing too is, I don't know if you watch some of my other episodes, but I, when I talk about a marinade, you really only need to marinate for an hour per pound. Okay. But that is piece weight. So this piece here is probably two ounces. Okay. So you don't need an hour, even though what we're working here with is a pound of right. whole meat, but you only need probably 10 minutes, especially with that high acid level. Mm -hmm. You only need 10 minutes to really get those flavors into that muscle. So it's very fast. This is one of those meals that you can make in a hurry uh, on a weekend or when they get the kids have soccer or yeah. baseball. So. <laughs> Yeah, and with the with the thin slice, you've just increased all of that surface area. So, yeah. so all of that marinating and seasoning action is just going to happen so much quicker. That's exactly right. And when we get to the cooking stage, it cooks that much faster. Exactly. That's why it is one of those quick and easy weekend uh, or weeknight recipes. So I'm going to take that out of there and utilize this bowl while we make the dressing for our Greek salad. Great. And the base of this is Greek yogurt. Thank you. <laughs> it's, uh, let me get another little spoon here. So Greek salad, we gotta have it be a Greek yogurt base. So what I'm gonna do is just take about a cup, one of those little containers of Greek yogurt, and then let's add in some more flavor to that with tahini. Okay, yes. So if you don't know what tahini is, it's actually, it's like the peanut butter world of sesame. It's ground sesame paste, but it has, they, they roast the sesames and, and you can get just wonderful nuttiness and, and creaminess and it works awesome in this particular dressing. I absolutely love it. That's what you need for hummus. Yes, tahini makes, tahini. yes, with your chickpeas yep. for the hummus. And then, I am a Dijon oh, yeah. person. I love a good whole grain Dijon. So I'm gonna add some whole grain Dijon to this. And then I'm also going to add just a little bit of Worcestershire, that umami, mm -hmm. I love umami Worcestershire. And we're gonna mix that all together. And then guess what we have to do? Salt and pepper salt to and taste. Pepper, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I kinda, when I salt and pepper, I, I look at the, <laughs> the quantity that I have. This is one of those things, we were talking about this earlier, um, how as a chef, we eat salt and pepper to taste. So taste as long as we go and add our salt and pepper in that way. And I look at the surface, you know, how much surface I have that I need to add salt. And also the ingredients, like if I have a lot of Parmesan or something like that that's gonna be more salty, right. then I hold off, taste it. You can always add more. Can't, can't take, take it, it out. And so. you gotta think about you know, all of the components. Exactly. So if, you know, if this is super salty and that's super salty, it, it, it all adds together. Exactly, that's exactly right. If you look at your ingredients as a whole before you really decide, I need this mm -hmm. a quarter teaspoon or a tablespoon, to me that's where written recipes get a little difficult as a chef. You know, we don't really work off of a recipe yeah. when it comes to seasoning. You know, baking, I love to bake, but it's very exact. When you're cooking more on this line, it's a little bit more. As we say in Texas, mas o menos. 
Masa menos. More or less. More, oh, okay. <laughs> Masa menos, okay. <laughs> when I went and, and uh, watched that episode on your website mm -hmm. that you talk about the electric stimulation. Please yeah. tell us a little bit more sure. of that because it's fascinating. Sure. Yeah. Um, so one of the steps, we have a lot of steps in our process uh, that really just kind of helps make our meat a, you know, a little bit above uh, the rest that are out there. So we're really trying to produce some, you know, we're harvesting wild animals, they're, they're pure animals, we want to honor you know, that animal uh, to produce the highest quality product you know, that, that can be available. So one of the steps is actually electrostimulation. It's not always dinner conversation, <laughs> but you know, really what happens is, is, is after the animal's been harvested in the field, we go up to that animal and uh, we're, we're trying to basically bleed the animal, drain, drain the blood from the animal. And so you know, we, we stick the animal, they're, they're dead. Um, you know, we stick the animal with the knife to kind of sever the arteries coming out of the heart. Uh, we hook up a elect portable electrostimulator uh, called the, the Tinder Buck, which is actually made by my brother-in-law. It's a portable stimulation unit. This is a technique that, that is uh, commonly used in traditional uh, slaughterhouses. We just took it out, you know, developed a device to take it out in the field. But That's fascinating that you runs, can do that. It runs an electric current through that animal. It, it causes the muscles to contract, which squeezes all the blood out of that muscle. And, and one of the complaints about um, Venison is that it has a, well, it's a gamey flavor and you know kind of this livery, irony flavor. Irony flavor you know, from the blood. Yeah. Think about it. You know, a lot of that flavor. Some of that flavor is just inherent to the meat. I mean, every every animal's got a different flavor profile, but a lot of that comes from improper bleeding. I mean, that irony flavor you know, is really just some of that latent blood that, that wasn't properly drained out of the muscles. Right, and just kind of how you you dress them out. Um, in the field and so forth, mm -hmm. you're really ensuring that quality product right. from the absolute beginning. Mm -hmm. So it, it's an amazing product. I'm, I told you I'm so impressed with the quality of that meat. Um, it's clean. It's beautiful. Thank you. Yep. So it's, we start with you know, wild and pure animals, uh, but we just really try to preserve that, that, that purity and that quality, you know, that's inherent to that animal all the way through the process. You know, our job is just, you know, just to kind of usher it along. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, so we get to enjoy it. So stick around and uh, we're going to start cooking up this shawarma. It's going to be fast and easy and then we're going to put it all together. So keep watching. We'll be right back. We're gonna cook up some of that South Texas antelope in the shawarma. So I've got my pan here already kind of on medium high and it's hot, ready for some olive oil. And this is a light olive oil, so you can saute with it, it's healthier. We're just gonna get a nice coat on the bottom of that pan. And then we're going to start layering in our antelope. So we're gonna kind of do these in stages and just kind of, uh, you don't wanna crowd your pan, but you wanna kind of separate it out a little bit and get that nice going. And then we're just gonna do these in stages and then we'll get ready to put it all together. One of the other things I'm gonna add is I've slivered up some onions and we're gonna saute that in there with it. And because these are so thin, it's not going to take long and you just flip them over. You can kind of tell by the color of the meat on the side when they're ready to go. So you never want to overcook game meat because it's so lean, it'll really dry out quickly. So you don't want to overcook it. So really pay attention to your where all of those uh, meat is, is ready for. So you can kind of see I've got some nice color on those pieces. And our onions are starting to get softened. And then I'm gonna take the meat out and let them rest while I do the next batch. Mm -hmm. 
So let's plate up some of this yeah. shawarma, Chris. It Looking smells so good. It. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do here is what, what I've done is we actually, I added some fine slivered red onion to that salad mm -hmm. that you made for me and then dressed it all. Yep. And then I've got some pita pockets here and I just wanna take one of those pita pockets and we're gonna add, I took that um, shawarma, that South Texas antelope, um, and, and slivered it up along with some with those cooked caramelized onions, and now I just wanna layer it in here. Mm -hmm. We tasted everything for seasoning. We added a little bit of salt if we needed it, a little bit more pepper, and then what I'm gonna do is just kinda layer it in there with some of this salad. Get, make sure you get all of the elements. Oh, we also added some feta cheese to this, and uh, you diced up some of that uh, Kalamata olives. And all of those are gonna bring a little more salt in, into this whole dish, right? Absolutely, you're absolutely right. Feta. Okay, so there we go with the pocket for you. I want you to try that while all I right. build up another one. Well, I love antelope, and I love shawarma. Yes. So I'm really looking forward to this. I'm so excited. Mm. That's great. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Plenty. Of, the acid kind of plays off on that with the lemon juice in mm -hmm. there, and then that sweet onion. Yeah. And then you add in the the, the feta cheese and and all of those yep. Greek salad elements. Doesn't it just really pair off get, of it? And you get the warm from the antelope, and the shawarma bits, and then you know the, the cool of the salad, and just a lot of nice contrast in the flavors and the temperatures and the textures. It's just outstanding. Well, and that, that antelope is still nice and tender. We didn't overcook it. Yep. So it, it's got a really great mouthfeel, yes? It does. Awesome. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. And the, the you know, with the shawarma, you know, traditionally we were, we were saying that, you know, it's done on a, on a rotisserie. Yes. So that you're, you're, you're browning it on the side and slicing it off. And with your technique, you kind of turn that rotisserie on its side, you're browning them directly on that pan and getting that same effect without having to build a 20 pound tower of meat. Right. <laughs> so we're getting that same type of um, surface thinned and, and marinated mm -hmm. in an easier, quicker, faster recipe for you guys to do at home. So thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Shelly's Game Kitchen. It's been my honor and pleasure to have Chris here with Broken Arrow Ranch. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, likewise, thank you. I appreciate you inviting me up. Yes, and so what we did today was shawarma with South Texas antelope from Chris's ranch there. And check out our next episode as well. We're gonna be cooking up some more game meat from your ranch. Super excited for those next episodes and recipes. So continue watching while I bring the forest to your table. This episode of Shelly's Game Kitchen was sponsored by Broken Arrow Ranch. Go to BrokenArrowRanch.com.